What's up YouTube? Welcome to Smitty's, the truck and travel channel. Today we got a special package in the mail. Uh, it actually came in seven days from China. Came from China to North Carolina in seven days. That is absolutely bonkers. I've, <laughs> I've never had anything come that fast from China. But I'm gonna go ahead and pop this box open and show you what's inside. Let's get to it. <laughs> So now that we got the, the main box off, this is a new head unit for my 4Runner, uh, the Sida. It actually has all the features that you want in a radio and it actually looks beautiful. Like, I kid you not when I say beautiful, it's absolutely beautiful. It looks factory and I think 4Runner should take notes from the Sida. So let's go ahead and pop this open and show you what's inside. All right, once you open up the box, you get your Standard warranty information, warranty card, installation, and user manual. That's pretty standard in every box you ever open in your entire life. Then you have all your wiring harnesses that you'll ever need, uh, which you do. Uh, there's a 2010 to 2013, a 2013 to a 2020. So you got to make sure you get the right harness for your radio. And this is another harness that's specifically for the 2014 to 2019 4Runner. This is this one right here, the CBO4. And what everyone probably wants to see is the actual head unit, which... <laughs> Look at that beautiful thing. It matches your factory knobs perfectly it matches your factory color perfectly the screen is the size you expect from anything past 2005 i'm gonna show you what you gotta do next all right so to get the new radio in you have to get the old radio out and what you got to do is you got to start on these two side pieces then you do your climate control then you do this main unit right here. So the first thing you do, grab the side here and pull out. Only has four push pins, so just pull out. Same thing with this side. Same thing, four, no five, sorry. There's five push clips. Then what you're gonna do, pull the climate control out. You don't have to disconnect it, just set it flat on the ground. Then, if you have the factory radio, you'll have one, two, three, four bolts to take out. I think they're 10 millimeters. But since this is an aftermarket, it only comes, you only have to do two. So one and two. Once you take those two out, the whole unit will slide straight out. And I was right. Here's your 10 mil. And it goes right on that bolt right there. Y'all won't have to worry about this, but this is my wireless charger for my iPhone. Now you got your actual head unit. Again, you won't have to worry about this. This is just for me. Grab it from the left, pull it. Grab it from the right, pull it. And there you go, you have it pulled out. All right, so if you have the factory radio, you'll have a bunch of clips that you have to unplug from the back. But since this is an aftermarket, my process to get this is a little bit different. All you gotta do is go to your factory clips and disconnect it from your factory clips. Boom, boom, boom. And like I said, here's your factory radio minus the vents because I, I took this out a long time ago. You'll have four bolts you have to take out. They're still the 10 millimeter. And then once you take those four bolts out, you do the same thing. You pull from the left, you pull from the right. 
and then just disconnect all your wires from the back. They're really easy. All you do is just push it right in the center and pull straight up. And depending on what options you have, like factory navigation, there'll be more clips installed in the back here. But that's literally how you take that out. All right, so I just ran and grabbed the harnesses for the new radio. Um, don't be intimidated by this install because the Saudi made this extremely, extremely simple. It's almost as simple as installing your factory radio back in your car. So it's just plug and plug. You don't have to wire anything. You don't have to do anything if you don't want to. Now, with this kit, this kit is for pretty much everything that the radio has as options. This is for USBs to be able to play media, to be able to do CarPlay, wired CarPlay. There is wireless CarPlay in this as well. This is just for GPS location. And then a lot of people were complaining that it sounds kind of muffled with the new radio. They give you an external microphone. And then this little teeny antenna right here is for Wi-Fi. This is one for just power. There's no data for this one. Then you have your reverse camera. Then you have this is if you want to install like uh, monitors in your headrests. Um, these are also used for like if you want an amp and you're you want bass and you put some subs in an amp. That's what this is for as well. And again, if you want to run anything like a subwoofer, some some amps, some rear, some front facing cameras, everything is labeled. So this is your power wire for your front cam if it'll focus. Everything's labeled perfectly. This is for your front cam and it's gonna come with an RCA. You just plug the RCA and then the power into power. This is for a subwoofer. This is for your mid-range speakers. This is for your front out, rear left, front left, rear right. It's very, very self-explanatory. There's thousands of videos on YouTube if you wanna get a more in depth on how to do that. But this is all your connections are gonna need. This radio comes prepared for basically any project you want to do with your 4Runner. So it's all really simple. Don't be intimidated. If you are intimidated, take it to a professional because professionals can knock this out in probably five minutes. Um, this kit is just is as self-explanatory. This box is just all the wiring configuration and your steering wheel controls. And then everything you disconnected on your factory radio, these are all the clips for it. I think there's like two that you don't actually use. So don't be intimidated if you can't plug something up. If something can't be plugged up, it's not meant to be plugged up. They use these kits in a multitude of different models and makes of cars. So this same harness may be used for a Toyota Camry. This plug may be used in your car, but not in the Camry. But this one may be used in the Camry and not in your car. You get what I'm saying? All right, so most people, when they first start a project, they'll plug this into the radio and then have to hold the radio up here while you're plugging in all these other uh, connections. What I do is I do the opposite. This black connector is what plugs into your radio. Don't worry about this for right now. All you're gonna be worrying about is these white connectors right here. White, 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 white. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And there's one, two, three, four, five. So there is one that you will not be using. And again, don't be intimidated because they only go in one connector. So see, this doesn't plug into here. This one won't plug into here. This one won't plug into here. This one, nope. This one, nope. The only one it can plug into is this one. So bam, see, that's one connector already knocked out. Same thing with the next one. It will plug into this one. It will not plug into this one or that one. It only plugs into one. Toyota did this on purpose, so you can't plug in the wrong connector with the wrong thing. Just hop to the next one. This is your antenna. Where's the antenna one? This is the antenna one. Plug it in. Plug it in. Plug it in. 
And if it don't go in, all you gotta do is just turn it and plug it in. But I had it right the first time. Bam, see? See how easy that was? And you're pretty much almost done. This is if you want an accessory when you turn the key without turning the ignition on. Same with this one, key two. These yellow ones, one of them is for if you want to install a backup camera or a front facing camera. These are your AUX cables. They also give you this cable right here with a, a USB on it. This is so you can still use your factory. You can't see it. This is so you can still use your factory connector right here. This just converts the signal to the new radio and it's just like that. And then you'll just plug in the USB into the radio. And that's pretty much it. You're not going to be using this one. Like I told you, there's all, there was one that won't be connected. And then this is your ground wire. The ground wire can just be grounded to itself on the side. And I'll show you that when we get there. But that's pretty much it. Like, there's no wires that aren't being utilized. Except for this one, this one, like I said, plugs into the new radio. But look how simple that is. And then this is for your antenna. It goes into the new radio as well. So these two plug into the radio as well as the USB. So that'll all be plugged into the radio. Ta-da. All right, so when you buy this radio, it won't come with your vent clip. It won't come with this piece to cover up this big gap. It don't come with the, the coverings for the vent. It doesn't come with your hazard button. What you have to do then is you have to convert whatever radio you're using and take those pieces and put it on your new piece. So if you never change your radio, all this stuff right here would be in your factory radio. But since I've changed out the factory radio for an aftermarket radio, everything's already in this aftermarket configuration. So I have to take out these vents, this button, this shield right here, uh, and these pieces around opening and closing the vents. And then the other thing you have to consider too is mounting the radio. So the factory radio has these mounting brackets right here that are bolted. Damn it. That are bolted to the side of the radio. This the SATA radio, you just take the factory brackets and put it on the new radio on the side. It's a very simple process. So what we got to do is we got to take all these pieces off, put it on the new one, and then take these factory brackets off and put it on the new one. Let's go ahead and knock that out. All right, to do this, you're gonna need a tiny Phillips head screwdriver. It ain't gotta be extremely tiny, it just, just got to be smaller than your average. The first thing I'm gonna focus on, I'm gonna focus on these vents. So go ahead and turn it around. And then basically, all I do is I pull to one side. So the right side, I push left and it pops out the clips all by itself. And then this one, same thing, pull it to the, pull it to the right and it pops out. Then on the bottom here, you'll see some screws. These two pop this cover off. These two pop the little, little shield right here off on both sides. And then the hazard button, all you do is just push from the top and push it forward and it'll slide out just like so and all i did is i just pushed this tab down right here all you need to do is just push one tilt it and slide it All right, so the next step, you can go ahead and put this on the new radio if you'd like, but I'm not gonna do that because I want as much clearance as I can for these new brackets. I'm gonna pop these brackets off next. All you need is an eight millimeter socket. And as you can see, it's one, two, three, four, five. All right, now that you got everything that you need off, 
it's pretty straight and simple. Just be mindful of the little screws because if you lose those, it's gonna be a pain to find a new one. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the foam that came in the box so I don't scratch up the new screen. Grab the new radio, set it right on top of it. And don't be discouraged at all. Right here, it says R for right. All you gotta do is find the bracket that says R. See, that says L, E L. And then this other one says ER for right. And then when you install this bracket, it's gonna look like it don't fit. But, but these two holes are these two holes. And then this little hole is a notch. To it's an aligning notch. So as soon as you put it on, you put that aligning mark in and then put your two screws right there. And then you're good to go. Same with the other side. When you're done, the back of it will look like this. The next thing I do is I put these vent covers on. This one I already put on, it snapped in. Same thing, just move this plastic. It just slides in just like that. Then put the bolts in the back. Last but not least is this plastic cover. There's an aligning tab on both sides. You'll see the little pointy thing right there beside the hole. See the point and then the hole. There's two holes, one's for the aligning mark, one's for the screw. You just slide it in. It snaps in, as you can see it snaps in right there and right there. Then you just put your screws in the top. One right there. And one right there. Next thing is the hazard button. Don't forget about it. You could just pop it from itself and slide it in, but I'm, I don't feel like taking apart the button. I'm just gonna feed it up through the hole. Make sure it's oriented right to the hazard going down. It'll only go in one way, so don't worry. That's your hazard button. And then the very last step, is just putting on your vent mount again. I just slide it into position. And basically just push down until they lock in. So after everything's attached, you think you're ready to go out to the car, but you can knock out a few more things before you head out that way. So grab your antenna for your GPS and then also the antenna for your Wi-Fi. First thing we're gonna install is the Wi-Fi antenna. It goes on this box that says, you guessed it, Wi-Fi. All you gotta do is just screw it on. And you don't have to go get a wrench to tighten it down. That is tight enough. My recommendation is to have it going sideways instead of up and down because the pieces in the car is gonna prevent it from sliding into the console. All right, the GPS signal, same thing on this side, screw it in. And what I do is, is I just tuck it, after I put the radio in, I just tuck it into the vents of the air conditioning. And you can also stick it to the bottom here if you want to, but the higher it is in the dash, the better signal you're gonna get. After you get those two done, head out to the car. All right, we're almost ready for the radio, but a few minor things you want to do is tape off the things you're not using with some electrical tape. Um, they were nice enough to give you some end caps for these wires. Uh, they're pretty secure up there, so you don't have, you can put some electrical tape up there so it don't move if you want to. Um, and then cap off this with some electrical tape. And how I do it is just grab some electrical tape Grab a little link like that, break it, put it right on, and then put it right on the exposed metal. It ain't gotta be pretty. Ain't nobody gonna be looking at it. And then that way it can't ground it and you can't hear buzzing if any metal hits it. All right, so the very last thing you wanna do before you hook up all the wires is you ground this to the side of the radio. 
and how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna take this back out just a little bit just loosely and then I'm going to slide this wire right underneath it just like that now you've grounded your radio plug in this black harness right here and I'm just going to set this in here so I can test all the functions make sure everything works before I button it all up oh and then also plug in your antenna the antenna goes into this wire right here it says ANT for antenna all right for your rear camera get the one with the brown connector and you're gonna plug it in the only one that it plugs into to that very top one I'm not worried about any of these because I don't really care about auxiliary. I'm just worried about the cam in. And then one of these yellow wires, it says two cam in, you see that? I just plug those two in together. Then again, make sure your, connected, your connections are covered. See how there's exposed metal right there? Just gonna wrap it so it's not exposed anymore. Just like so. Now it's protected. All right, so now I'm gonna turn it on and make sure everything works like it should. I shouldn't have took off the plastic, but I did anyway. And on first startup, it's gonna be really slow because it is the first, first startup. Everything's gotta start running and, and boot up and the RAM's gotta kick in and, wow, that's really beautiful. And then this one is for CarPlay with the white connector and the purple connector. So the purple plugs in the radio, the white plugs into, you guessed it, USB. It goes in the second one. I'm gonna plug this into this. Now this connector becomes that connector. So anything I plug into there, I'm essentially plugging into this white connector. All right, after everything's verified that it works and you have no problems, go through and make sure all your connections are good. After everything is good and you checked all your connections, um, don't forget about your hazards. Plug your hazards back in. And then after you do that, you want to tuck your wires down. You see this part of the dash right here? You want to go behind it. So just like you see how, the, how this box went back there, you want to tuck everything back there just like that. Once all your wires are pretty good, what I do is I usually go behind here with my hand and try and pull it down a little bit further because this does get hot in the back. After you do that, don't forget about your bolts. If you just took out your factory radio, you'll have all four. I only have two, but two works just fine. Never had any issues. And to get these in, you basically got to grab the bracket and move it over a little bit. I don't know if you can see that, but now it's aligned. Now it's not aligned. and then put your climate controls back up into the place. It's only four connectors. It goes here, 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 and there. Once you feel it, it's... And then put your stupid little side pieces back on. And there you go. Now you have a brand new factory looking radio. So to give you an idea of the new head unit, 
and the factory head unit. I'm gonna see how long it takes to boot this up. And it would probably be a little bit faster, but I haven't had this hooked up in probably about six to eight months. So give it a little break. All right, so now I'm gonna show you the boot time for the Decida and see how quick it is, how slow it is. I've had it in here for a couple days now. Pretty good. This is the boot menu for the CarPlay, so it's already up. But I can't hook up CarPlay because I'm on the phone recording. Oh, no way. After all was said and done, there was three things that I didn't use after installation. One, the microphone. So I hooked up my phone to Bluetooth and then I tried calling somebody and they said they heard me just fine. They said it was a little muffled, but it wasn't that bad. So. I don't need an external microphone when there's the microphone inside the unit. Two, these USBs. These USBs allow you to do a multitude of things that from charging to hooking up an SD card so you can watch movies on the unit itself, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it also has the microphone attachment to it. So if you wanted to use the external microphone, you have to plug this up and then plug the microphone into that. And the last one is this. Um, I didn't use a front camera. I didn't need an amplifier. I didn't need a subwoofer. And that's pretty much this entire connector. But the installation was fairly simple. It was just plug and play. All right, so I had this radio for about a week now to the SATA and it can pretty much do everything you throw at it. Uh, there's a few gripes that I have, but everything else is positive. I'm not gonna talk about the positives and the negatives right now. I'm just gonna show you a few features of the radio. All right, so let's jump into it. I apologize if you can see me in the reflection. There ain't much I can do about it. Um, this is the radio in all its glory. On the main screen, as you can see, this is maps. You can see that I'm in Alabama. Over here is whatever you're playing on your music. So it could be YouTube, it could be the radio, it could be a thumb drive. That's what I'm using right now, a thumb drive. As you can see right here in this corner. Local music is my thumb drive with 15,000 songs, radio, and Bluetooth music. And just like anything Android, uh, it has a bunch of apps. These are your quick apps. So you got home, the list of apps, your music, Google Maps. This is for your CarPlay or Android Auto. This is your CarPlay or Android Auto settings, and this is your settings. I just put those as my quick access, but if you open this up, this is all stock. I haven't downloaded anything from the Play Store. The Play Store is right here. You can download anything. You can download Netflix, you can download Hulu. It has a full Chrome browser. You got your emails right from your screen and so on and so forth. A cool feature about this that the 4Runner doesn't have is it lets you know if somebody opens the door. So that's my front driver door and that's my rear driver door. Like it's pretty cool. It also has settings for your AC. So as you can see, I turned it on. Let me go ahead and open up uh, YouTube just to show you that it does work. As you can see, just gonna click on something.
And if you want a full screen, just go up. Down. And it'll also screen and screen, but I don't want, I want that playing right now. It's very, very responsive. There's a delay sometimes, but it's not that bad at all. As you can see, it's really, really fluid. It has built-in navigation. I have yet to use it. I just set that setting to go automatically to Google Maps, so I don't have to worry about it. You can customize this thing any way you want to. Like when you turn on your headlights at night, these light up blue. You can change these red, green. You can change the background of light, dark, any color. And then if you want CarPlay or Android Auto, all you have to do is go to Z Connect right here. Let's just click on that. And just did you expect, you have your music over here. If wherever you're navigating to, there'll be directions over here. I'm pretty sure everyone's familiar with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay at this point. And if you're really, really big in audio and you have an amp and uh, extra speakers, you can tune, fine tune your settings for your sound fantastically. Any EQ setting that you need is going to be here. Here's some more settings for your audio and then the position of your audio. But that's just radios, features, and a gist. There's a whole, whole lot more that I didn't go over, but I just wanted to give you a brief overview of the radio and it's fantastic at this point.